We're Sean and Caroline Allen. We are parents of eight children, ages 17 to three months right now. And we're here to continue talking about parenting two-year-olds. So today, we wanna to talk to you about media. So media is a huge word um, with parenting. You hear technology, media, phones, you know, it's out there, everything is out there. Uh, it feels like you can't turn around without a child begging to be on your device, begging for a movie. You know, they're, they're addicted. It seems like children today are addicted. So we're gonna to talk to you about two-year-olds and kind of what we allow in our home and uh, kind of give you a challenge to see if you could examine what you're allowing your two-year-old to watch. So why do you think it's so important with what our two-year-olds watch? Well, like you said, it, it's because it leads to an addiction of sorts. And uh, I mean, we've, we've grown up with it and now it's, it's, it's a tidal wave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we had it bad enough when we were young and now it's on every screen, everywhere. And it's, you know, we used to have to walk to the video store to go rent a video, right? And you had it for two days and then you had to bring it back. And and now it's just like click, click, click. And you can get any episode, any movie, any anything in an instant. And so, and we see that with our children. Um, they get so enamored with this stuff. And parents are tempted to use it as a babysitter, so mm -hmm. there's a pitfall there. Especially for two-year-olds. Yeah, so they stick them in front of a TV, and we, right. we understand that because yeah. it's really the one thing where they'll actually just kind of stop and just, you know, for however long you're going to put it on there. Yeah, I've definitely done it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as you do that, they, they, they want more, and they want more, and they want more, and then they become accustomed to every day I'm going to watch a show mm -hmm. at this particular time or all day long or whenever I want. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a more of an issue with the, the parent if you're not willing or able for, for whatever reason to be present and you're using this, you know, as mm -hmm. a kind of as a, as, as a, a drug, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're using it for yourself and they, they, they think they benefit from it too. So it's a win-win. Right. Um, but what are you, you know, you might run out of stuff to show them. You might have this one, you might start with this one wholesome cartoon that you think is okay. And then, you know, some friend introduces you to something else and then they're onto that show and then they're onto the next show and the next show and the next show. And it just gets, it kind of, it can spiral out of control. So like Caroline was saying, um, like we were talking about earlier, our boys watched zero cartoons growing mm -hmm. up. Right. Um, we had a period there where we didn't have a TV. Right. And then we we got one, and then they started watching um, Mr. Fix It, which is not a cartoon. <laughs> no, no, no. So, you all might not know what right. Mr. Fix It is. But. So when our boys were little, which they're now 17 and 15, they watched Moody Science videos. I'm yes. just going to get really specific here. I'm going to outline what we do, let our children watch then and now. They watched Moody Science videos and Mr. Fix It Bible videos, which is a mm. very old show. Um, and they watched like science type stuff yeah I mean, they had i think they had like four videos yeah. that they watched and one of them was about building tree houses or right something like that. So right they were pretty limited on what they watched but even with that i mean they just loved it they just right. ate it all up and and we could have easily branched out into other things because they don't you know they don't have necessarily the discernment you know at that at that age and so they kind of suck all this stuff up mm -hmm. Now, you could definitely set them in front of something that was shocking or that would scare them. And, you know, obviously we stayed away from that. But what we notice is that with our current... Uh, two-year-old. Two-year-old, yeah. Well, how old is Sophia? Four? Six. Six? Oh, man. Two and six. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, they like Peppa Pig. Yes. And I like Peppa Pig. I think it's fun to watch. That's actually one cartoon I like, like watching. But as time has gone on, it seems like it's kind of changed a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that there, maybe as it's become more popular, there's been more pressure for the producers to, you know, make it more mainstream. Mm -hmm. And so there's some attitudes with, with Peppa and just some different things that we've noticed. And even our, our six-year-old, Sophia, mm -hmm. has come to us and said, I don't, like we let them watch one of the most recent videos. And right. she was like, I don't, Peppa's not the same. She yeah. not, I don't like her attitude towards her parents and stuff. Right. And so she had to come to us and, and tell us that. And so... Uh, we're just very, very careful with things like that because we've also noticed that they might have watched something somewhere else 
and they come back to our house and there there's some kind of strange attitude or mm-hmm. some kind of they're just kind of out of whack for a while mm-hmm. and then we're like oh yeah and they were over at so and so's house and they were watching whatever right. it, it all it took was just that one setting one exposure it, yeah it yeah. changed it yeah so so basically we want to tell you to not worry about being too careful mm-hmm. i know today there's the pressure on parents to expose your child to you know life and culture and and let them experience things and i'm here to tell you shelter your two-year-old and don't mm-hmm. be ashamed of that Don't feel like you're doing them a disservice. If you get rid of the TV in your home, you won't be doing them a disservice. Um, We're not here to tell you to do that. We we haven't made that choice, but uh, we are very careful. We have pulled back. We kind of went a little lax and we keep pulling back more and more and saying, no, let's just not watch that. Let's, Let's turn this off. So we do Winnie the Pooh. We do Peppa Pig still, but we're trying to get away from the newer ones. Um, and we're really, really trying to encourage out, outside play. It's warming up. Um, instead of just saying, here, let's let's you know sit in front of the TV all afternoon, it's go outside and play and, and limit what they're watching. Try and limit, like, they watch something with a family. Um, we watch Andy Griffiths in the evening or Bonanza or, you know, something like that. Try and get back to cleaner TV shows and and don't be afraid to turn off the tv and say no you're not going to watch this and they'll scream and cry and throw a fit because they're two but you're the parent and it's okay to tell them no you're not going to watch this and when we have had seasons when we have totally shut the tv off for you know a couple of weeks and we've just taken a media fast that first week it's really hard um our our youngest you know children they are just crying and begging i really want to watch something but then they adjust and they become so happy. That's what we've noticed. They are so happy without the TV, but it takes that adjustment period because it's like you're doing withdrawal. You're withdrawing them off sugar or a drug or something like that where you're like, I really want it. Um, so to sum up, don't, don't be afraid to be careful with your two-year-old and don't be afraid to tell family members no, to to even come to your children and say, I did allow you to watch this, but we've changed our minds and now we're not. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's hard because they're surrounded with a lot of other people that might not share those values and might think that everything is, particularly with Disney, it's just so harmless and so fun, so magical and all this stuff. That's that's Disney. We're very selective on, on that stuff. Uh, we signed up for Disney Plus for a little while and we're just like, no, we can't do this. They yeah. just, there was like one or two things on there that we felt were appropriate and everything else was kind of rubbish. I don't <laughs> I mean, for your young ones, particularly. For your young ones. I, I mean, oh, we're so selective on that, but if you're fe- feeding them a steady stream of that, I don't know if you all know this, but I'm sure many of you do, but Disney does not have the best interests of your children in mind. Mm-hmm. They don't. They they're producing things that are just so so intensely sweet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not healthy. And if you're feeding them a steady a steady diet of that media, uh, you can rest assured it's going to do something to their attitudes, to their spirits, um, to their countenances. Everything is is being affected because they have they have agendas. They mm-hmm. have there are belief systems in back of <laughs> what they produce, and it's very clear. And I know because it's cute and it's cuddly and the songs are so, you know, so memorable, you think, oh, what, what could possibly be wrong with this? <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a lot of it, lot wrong with it. And our, there's some things that we can, we, there's a list of things that we could go through that our, our oldest boys have not seen mm-hmm. that yeah, even amongst friends and even church members, I'd say, is a little astonishing. You yeah. Know, that you People are like, seen, you haven't seen it? You haven't seen this, you haven't seen that? Yeah. And uh, no, and maybe at some point they will, but yeah. we're just trying to, we're trying to build a good solid foundation for mm-hmm. uh, if, if that day comes, that they'll be able to properly process that stuff. And if it comes on too soon, you know, you're kind of up the creek without a paddle. So yeah. anyway, yes, particularly for the two year olds, be very, very careful. They're so, you know, when you, when you get these young ones, you know how they are. You, you wouldn't leave them outside for, you know, two or three days all on their own. They're so sensitive. They're so weak, so fragile. 
and their systems just can't handle it. They need somebody to care for them. It's the same with media exposure. They just, mm -hmm. you have to be so very careful what you feed them, what you set them in front of, what you say to them, you know, all of these things. So just be sensitive to those issues. <clears throat>